What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Rivian. This is a new electric vehicle startup that has just come out of stealth mode. I'm recording this from Los Angeles. It's about 10 p.m. I just got back from the Rivian event where they unveiled their first new Rivian pickup truck, the RT1. This is a company that's been in stealth mode for nine years, finally ready to unveil their car. I got the chance to get invited to this event, go to the unveiling, sort of Tesla-style product unveiling event, Huge shout out to Sean Mitchell and his YouTube channel for inviting me. Rivian is just this interesting company. It's been on my radar for a while, but very, very little information has been known about the company until today when they finally released the specs, the pictures, and had the product unveiling for their first pickup truck. So first I'm gonna go through what the event was like and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about Rivian, the company. I've never been to an event like this. Felt like I was a little bit out of place, totally not cool enough to be there. You know, it's this fancy event for all of the customers, suppliers, employees, you know, important people at the company to sort of come together and have this little party and, and see the truck and, and for us to all watch a presentation about it. And then they also opened up deposits for their pickup truck. So the event starts at a beautiful place in the Griffith Observatory of Los Angeles Angeles, you know, overlooking the whole city, this incredible buildup. We had to wear like these headphones that had like music coming into them and they drove up the electric pickup truck. It looked incredibly badass. They had it there. Everyone was taking pictures, you know, this big time product unveiling. Um, they talked a little about the truck, explained the specs, explained the mission of the company, let us all go around, take pictures of the truck. Really overall, just an awesome event. Met a ton of interesting, you know, Tesla, EV community people. So it was a lot of fun. Really, really interesting to see this, this new comp company, Rivian, come up. There's no details on how much money they raised, what their valuation is, but it's pretty clear they have hundreds of employees. They just purchased a major factory in Illinois to be, you know, to be a vertically integrated EV manufacturer, you know, they're trying to compete pretty much not head on with Tesla. You know, they're not building sedans or SUVs, but they are a purely electric car company and they are based in the US. And so they have a lot of similarities to Tesla. And this was the first chance we really got to look at their product. We weren't allowed to really go inside the product or sit in it. We didn't get a test drive it, but we were allowed to go all around the product. And I have to say, I was incredibly impressed. And I will caveat this by saying I don't get close to too many electric vehicles, but you know, the details were incredible. The, um, they have a huge front, they have a you know a huge towing space, they have this crazy gearbox where you can store all this stuff, like your skis, like your surfboard. They even have this cool little handy flashlight that just pops out of the door. Um, you know, in the front of the car, it's very sort of Tesla tech-esque with a massive touch screen. You know, everything is controlled through this digital interface. Even in the back seats, they have a little touch screen as well. Um, the car looks super, super premium. Uh, you know, it starts at about 70 grand before tax incentives. So this is not a cheap truck by any means, but it looks and feels premium just out of the future. And I have to say, this is probably the first electric truck that I actually like or electric car just in general besides a Tesla that I like was excited about that looked cool that I personally as a consumer would want to own I totally want to show up to a party or whatever driving this car because it looks just sort of like a really sexy pickup truck on um, the insides very premium well built lots of really good little details honestly even more so than a Tesla that really make it stand out um, and what's even perhaps more impressive than the tr than than the car itself or what's getting a ton of attention is the specs you know, this is a car that can go uh, incredibly fast, zero to 60 time as most EVs, but beyond that, it can tow about 11,000 pounds up there with some, you know, huge heavy duty pickup trucks. But beyond that, what's so impressive is the battery pack is bigger than we've seen out of anything from Tesla. They claim to have a 250 mile plus, a 300 mile plus, and a 400 mile plus range version of their car. Um, and this is a car that they unveiled tonight, which they are accepting $1,000 refundable deposits for. A ton to get excited about here. You know, uh, it's a super premium product. I have no idea what the market type demand is for a, a premium luxury pickup truck price from, you know, 70, 80, 90 grand, but it, it is amazing. And I'm a huge fan of innovation in the space. And, and there was a ton of excitement tonight around finally seeing, you know, another company put forward, you know, a beautiful, compelling product that really felt like it was a, a step forward in the future of the automotive industry, um, not just an electric version of an ICE car. And that's what I think the biggest takeaway was for Rivian. You know, it, this is something that I'm really excited about as an EV enthusiast, and they've just captured this sort of je ne sais quoi of like a cool product, futuristic tech, 
um, and just made a sort of desirable brand from the ground up. And so I think there's a lot to get excited about Rivian. Unlike a lot of ele other electric car companies, one of my favorite parts about them is that they're founded, um, their CEO and founder has been working with the company for about nine years. He graduated from MIT um, and then has been working on Rivian for almost a decade since then. And they've been pretty much in stealth mode and haven't said anything. And he is still the founder and CEO today. Like he gave the presentation. He was there talking to people very much the face of the company sort of as Elon is for Tesla. And so, you know, as an investor, I like to bet on the jockey, not the horse, specifically when it's a startup at this early stage. And I think that seeing, a, you know, a, unlike Faraday Future, Lucid Motors, or all these other electric car startups where you can't name the CEO, there isn't this forward face, or Neo, you know, there isn't this, this face of the company, um, this entrepreneur who, who who's also an engineer that has like sort of the vision and the drive to, to really do what it takes to bring, you know, a car company to mass market to success, which is an incredibly difficult road. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I think Rivian is, is in a category with Tesla um, in that it has this sort of owner, operator, founder. So I love that part of the company. But now in terms of like investing, you know, what's the potential of Rivian? You know, it, at this point, it's a beautiful truck. It looks amazing. The company has a ton of hype. They're here in LA. A Rihanna was at the party. Like, I'm not joking. Rihanna was like five feet away from me at this unveiling event. Crazy. Um, no, I didn't get to say what's up. But anyway, this looks awesome and I'm super excited about it. But also like the skeptic and just sort of investor in me who's been watching Tesla for the last decade thinks like, man, these guys have such a long road ahead of them. I mean, they, they have one pickup truck now, but they're not even starting consumer deliveries for at least two years. That's assuming no delays. That's in startup time. But they're going to need billions and billions of dollars to be able to successfully bring this car to market. And, and the other thing that's a big question mark for me is, you know, it has a long range, but they're advertising this car as sort of a new electric adventure vehicle or sort of this new category of off-roading, you know, their whole thing, which I really respect because I think they're doing a niche that Tesla isn't doing, is this off-roading thing of like, take take your our, our car skiing, you know, take it in the mountains, have fun, enjoy nature, be sustainable. It's a car built for adventures. Like one of my favorite, and they, and they really have these lot of what they call like even Easter eggs in the car, like the little flashlight I mentioned that just pops out, sort of product built for fun and enjoying the outdoors. So I love that niche that they've carved out for themselves, but on the flip side, that brings up even more scrutiny on my mind on the charging of that car and the charging infrastructure that's needed for the Rivian. Because, you know, the Tesla, sure, you're, it's your everyday driver you're driving around the town, maybe a big road trip with their family, which is on a common route where there's a supercharger. And so Tesla's found this answer to long range charging. Rivian hasn't. They haven't announced plans for their own charging network. They didn't really have a good answer at the event of what their plans were for charging. And as a vehicle that I want to take off road on the mountains, on skiing in the middle of nowhere, charging is a huge, huge question mark. So there's a lot of practical things like that that I think are gonna really cause friction when they try and make this more of a mass market car. Tomorrow, I probably went on way too long of a rant right there, but tomorrow I'm going on the, to the LA Auto Show and I'm gonna check out um, Rivian's electric truck they just unveiled today and they're gonna have an electric SUV apparently at the Auto Show tomorrow. Anyway, this is HyperChange. Have a good night, peace. What up, HyperChange? Hope you can see me okay. Right outside the Staples Center behind me, just got out of the LA Auto Show, saw Rivian's presentation, super stoked. So by now, you've probably all seen on the internet, Rivian has unveiled not only their electric pickup, the RT1, but also the R or R1T, but also the R1S, um, a car built on the same platform, which is an all electric SUV. Um, they had this really cool presentation, sort of the keynote that I just got out of, where the CEO um, and founder, RJ, gave this uh, presentation about the company, sort of like Tesla product unveiling style. I actually thought it was really well put together, a ton of interesting graphics about the car, explanation about the battery pack, um, you know, the architecture of the vehicle, their suspension, um, how starting with a clean slate um, and just a purely electric vehicle architecture was really an advantage for a lot of different things. And so that's a big, a big takeaway of why I think, you know, companies like Rivian who are starting from scratch from the ground up with, with electric vehicles in mind seem to have a huge advantage. And that's one thing that I noticed from their presentation. Uh, another huge takeaway is the interior of the car is like 
incredible, really like sort of luxury esque. They all they have like this amazing touch screen, uh, just like Tesla. They showed some demos of that on screen. Um, once again, they referenced the towing capacity of 5,000 kilograms, 11,000 pounds. They showed how it can go up a 45 degree angle. Uh, they also showed how the car has all these charge ports, um, all the storage it has. You know, this car has really been designed for someone who wants to have fun outdoors. And that's one of my big takeaways is, is they're owning the niche of the electric adventure vehicle. 400 plus miles of range for the top car, for the pickup, um, even a little bit more range actually for the top of the line uh, SUV. They didn't give specifics on pricing, but my understanding is these cars start at around 70,000 for the cheapest, uh, lowest range battery option and then go up from there. Tons of excitement at the event. Um, a lot of people were there, it was packed the energy, the music, like you can tell there's just a lot of excitement around this brand. And I don't know uh, really how they've been able to cultivate that, but they seem to be doing an excellent job at just building hype for the vehicles. Um, they probably, I have no idea how many reservations they've gotten for their cars. They're ready to start deliveries in two years, but I guess that's kind of the easy part. You know, where the rubber meets the road is, are they gonna be able to deliver these cars at scale, produce them profitably, and meet the, the very high bar of expectations that they've set, and are also setting by, you know, having a $70,000, you know, plus pickup truck and SUV. UV. But anyway, I'm, I'm just really excited about seeing another company that has created a desirable uh, electric vehicle, something that actually is like a product you aspire to own, that's cool, that's futuristic, that looks like a step forward for the industry. And I think Rivian has captured that. So I'm, I'm more excited to follow this company than ever. Really sending details about it, but oh my God, cameo from Teslanomics. You're out. <laughs> Just had a, one more thought. Um, thought it would be cool to talk about, would I invest in Rivian? Is this company that I think is investable or, or just anything about that sort of thing? Will they IPO? So, I mean, the company has been very quiet and tight-lipped about you know how much money they've raised, what their valuation is, on what terms. We don't know that, but they appear to be very well-funded. I mean, they have a team of 600 employees, three offices. They're vertically integrated. You know, They have these two cars they want to bring to market at once. They're buying this whole factory in Illinois to do the production. It sounds like most of that financing has already been secured. What is the valuation if I had to guess? Probably somewhere around half a billion to a billion dollars just based on the nine years of R&D and tech development and you know hundreds of employees they have uh, to get to this stage. They're, they've got to be worth at least a couple hundred million in my uh, in my estimation. And I mean, also, I just think the valuation of some of these electric vehicle startups is, is a little bit exorbitant in general if that seems pricey just because you know Tesla's shown they can make a profit. They're worth 55 billion. Neo IPO, they're only delivering a couple thousand cars, but they're also worth billions of dollars. So uh, th there's a groundwork and a precedent for these comparable companies to be worth a similar amount. So I think if if Rivian can start bringing these cars to market, we could see their valuation rapidly rise to, to several billion dollars once they begin scaling deliveries and if people continue to buy into the long-term vision of the company. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is in terms of autonomy, the company also has LiDAR equipped on their cars, which I got to take a picture of at the event last night. And so, they're, you know, they're gearing up for autonomy. They even mentioned in the presentation, like how nice would it be if you go hiking and then you can just drive drive back and not even worry about your car on the freeway, not even have your hands on the wheel or look at the road, which would mean imply some sort of level four or level five autonomy um, on the freeways, at least they're planning for that. So the company is, is very forward thinking that they're trying to create this new electric adventure venture vehicle niche. Um, you know, pickup trucks in the U.S. sell almost a million units a year, or just Ford sells almost a million units a year. So this is a huge, huge market. Not a doubt in my mind, Rivian will need to raise billions and billions of dollars of capital. If they're only worth 500 to a billion, then they're either going to have to dilute significantly, increase their valuation, or take on some debt. Um, I think there's a number of ways they can raise financing, but the fact that they need a couple billion dollars to successfully execute their mission makes me think that this is a great candidate to IPO, leverage the liquidity of the public markets to raise funding, and to build this business model, also just to build hype and brand awareness. Um, I think IPOing is a really, really smart move for Rivian. Um, I also think from the, the flip side, the, the perspective of a large automaker like Ford or GM or one of these legacy companies that isn't doing much in electrification, I think buying Rivian and operating it as a subsidy would be a really fascinating idea. This is something that Sean Mitchell actually was talking to me about, so he gets the credit for the idea. I might make a whole moonshot about that. But um, I think those are a couple different scenarios. But I would be personally looking out for a Rivian IPO in maybe 20 2020 or 2021, just because I think they're going to need so much capital. Also, um, the other thing about Rivian, though, would I buy it if it went public? Honestly, yes. Just because the, the combination of having the owner, operator, founder, I haven't seen another electric vehicle startup. And that's like one of my, my rules for all companies in general is having a CEO who's like believes in the mission, is, you know, loves the company and uh, is, is like puts, puts his heart and his soul and his life into it. And I, and I really get the sense of that with RJ, like Elon, um, but I haven't gotten the sense of that with any other electric vehicle startup. So that's why 
I, I believe in this more than others. Also, the product is just, I don't know, I probably haven't done a good job describing it. There's probably much better videos than the, of the product online, but in one word, it's just cool and futuristic. I guess that's two words, but that, you know, it, and it looks like rugged and it looks like it has better performance. You know, the electric drivetrain is just allows you to, to have a, a faster car that can tow more. Probably won't have the same range as a ICE pickup, but I think a lot of the specs are actually going to be equivalent, if not better. Um, the storage space is way more. Um, and so these are the kind of things that will really make this stand out as, as an amazing product in its category. And so that's why I'm convinced in the company. Um, I think they, they know what they're doing and I would totally invest in this company. I mean, I think vertical integration is the way to go. I think starting from scratch with an electric vehicle platform is the way to go. And I'm skeptical of most of these companies, but Rivian seems to just have the it factor. In terms of the math of revenue and, and gross profit potential, I mean, it, just from the pickup truck alone, let's say they sell, you know, 100,000 units a year of that, um, which would be about 10% of what Ford sells of its F-Series in the US. I mean, this is a much more luxury premium car, so I don't think the market will be as big, but I think 100,000 would be sort of a best case or good, really bull case scenario for this, maybe even a little more. That's a $10 billion product from just the pickup truck. The SUV could be another five to ten billion dollar product um, and then you think about Rivian's not going to stop there with their electric platform so it's easy to see how this company scales from uh, where it is today to if they can rapidly scale production to 100,000 units a year um, then they could be doing a, t a 10 billion in revenue and I think probably worth around 10 or 15 or 20 billion at that point and so that's why if you were able to invest in them today to 500 million to a billion valuation there's a ton of upside still even though it seems like some big numbers just because they're attacking such a large market but then the question is how fast will they be able to get to 100,000 uh, you know, units per year produced? That to Tesla, five or 10 years. You know, I think Rivian could probably do it a little faster because they're gonna have more capital to spend than Tesla did at that stage. Um, and, and it sounds like they've already worked out a lot of the tech and they've already bought the factory. So maybe they could hit 100,000 units per year produced by like 2023. But even then, that's still five years away. And so, I don't know. It's, it's just, there, there's so many unknowns with Rivian. It's so exciting and there's so much potential, but uh, really the rubber is yet to meet the road pun intended uh it's all about you know you know they probably raised 100 million dollars and just unveiled one or two prototypes so spending 100 million dollars just to unveil one or two prototypes is great but that's not like a good company you know the actual good company part means manufacturing tens 20 hundred thousand of these cars at a gross profit margin of between 20 to 30 percent and that's the really hard part that's what where a lot of these companies fail is not unveiling the sexy first product but it's actually scaling this delivering it have customers be happy and that's all up in the air with rivian Anyway, I wanted to wrap up the video with a huge shout out to Sean Mitchell um, for, and his YouTube channel for inviting me to this event. Also a huge shout out to Rivian. Um, I hit them up and was trying to go to this and said that if they would help pay for my travel costs, then I could go. They agreed to. They haven't actually reimbursed me yet. But anyway, huge shout out to Rivian for that. And uh, just the hard work they've done. Seems I'm, I'm really impressed to see the progress so far. So stoked to follow this company and see how everything evolves. Um, and yeah, anyway, this is HyperChange. Would love to know what you guys think in the comments below about Rivian. Are you going to put down a deposit? Do you think this is the real deal? I mean, I just have so many questions um, and would love to get your take. Um, anyway, this is HyperChange signing off. See you guys next time.